Today, I'm gonna share the recommendation letter that I think got me into Stanford. I went to Stanford as an undergrad, I did computer science there, and had a really fun four years there. But it was hard getting into because acceptance rate at Stanford was very low. It's about 4% every year. For international students like me, the acceptance rate is even lower, estimated to be around 1%, even though the data is not publicly available. To boost my chances, I actually gave five recommendation letters. I gave two from my school teachers that everyone does, and I also gave three other recommendation letters. Two were from my supervisors, under whom I did research, and one was from my debate coach, under whom I debated in the uh, high school team and national team. I think it's gonna be strange and a bit cringy to read this recommendation letter. It was a while ago, and I don't even remember what was written in it. I only got it because I requested to the person over email later. I did not even have it. So I specifically got this for this video, so I hope you will like it. And if you like content about education or anything related to student life, you should hit that subscribe button. Context, this recommendation letter was written when I was doing my research internship at a biological lab at Oxford. I was doing some wet lab research with a lab that works with CRISPR-Cas9 and the supervisor in that lab wrote this recommendation for me. I was very lucky to given the opportunity to do this and this really happened because I was in a boarding school in the UK where I had a full scholarship and I was studying in that school. It's called United Royal College if you want to check it out. And because it was in Wales and Oxford is in England, it's only three or four hours bus ride, I was able to go there and do it. So let's get started with reading it. About two months ago, Sheikh Rifaid Dayan Srijan, yeah, that's my real name. I know it's massive. Blame my parents, I didn't name myself. Contacted me, showing his interest in learning molecular biology-based techniques in our laboratory at the University of Oxford. I think what I like about this opening is it's very direct. It sets up the scene very well that it was at that university. And it's very specific about what the lab does. I think it also gets some brownie points in terms of the reputation game. Maybe when a university sees that I did something at Oxford at high school level, it's probably impressive. But I've always said that what you do matters more than where you do it. So it plays those things well in terms of setting up the scene. A lot of these admissions officers read like six seconds, 20 seconds per essay. So initially, if there's something that catches their eyes, that's always a good. Our work mostly focuses on the genetic modification of colorectal cancer cell lines. At first, I was really skeptical regarding the suitability of a school student in a cutting edge molecular biology lab. In fact, I've hardly seen a student at such a young age visiting our facility before. I think this does good in terms of storytelling a bit. You have a skeptical supervisor, there's a bit of conflict in the opening itself, and they think that I shouldn't be there. And I think that adds more character and depth to the recommendation. Most of these recommendations are so dry, so I'm actually really grateful that this person wrote this in storytelling kind of way where it's fun to read. Moving on, to my utter surprise, after being contact with our principal investigator, Dr. Shazia Irshad, Mr. Srijan was given a rare opportunity of learning basic molecular biology and cancer cell culture techniques in the Nuffield Department of Clinical Laboratory of Sciences. Yeah, that's a loaded line. It just sort of gives more of the setup and the introduction. I think what I like about the closing of this paragraph is that it's realistic and it's humble because it says that I was given the rare opportunity of learning basic molecular biology. And there's this common pet peeve in college applications that you have to be the best in the world at the age of like 16 or 18 or however old you are. And I think that's really like funny, right? Because every kid is like, oh, I solved cancer before I was 16. And cancer is not cancer anymore, right? AI is the new cancer. And every kid is like, I solved AI or artificial general intelligence these days, even before they're 16. So I think I like the fact that this paragraph is humbling and it says that it was most an opportunity to learn and I did not have to be like a Nobel laureate at that young age. Reading on, Mr. Srijan, I, I can't believe that I'm reading Mr. Srijan, it's so pompous, but it, I guess it's just formal or the person wrote it, thought it's adequate to refer me like that. Maybe in grad school applications, they refer to people like that. I don't really know, but it's kind of funny. Let's read. Mr. Srijan performed 46 hours of laboratory work under my direct one-to-one -one supervision during his visit to Oxford. He has been a keen observer in the lab who asks intuitive questions and often proposes his novel thoughts regarding our experiment. I think it's a nice second paragraph as well because it's starting to give some anecdotes. He's basically saying that I was a keen observer and I was inquisitive and I'm sure in the next line he's gonna give evidence of why that was the case. 
and I talk about this in my recommendation video that you can find here where it's very important to give anecdotes and strong evidence of your claims um, and this recommendation does that which is great let's read further one day while we were using PCR which is polymerase chain reaction it's kind of chemical reaction to sequence a gene we faced a rare problem as the reaction was failing again and again Ooh, failing reaction Srijan then trailed back and identified that the DNA concentration was too low. He proposed a titration experiment with increasing the level of DNA in multiple reactions to find at least one positive result. This type of thinking is highly appreciable in robust and high throughput science. To his credit, he was able to solve the problem on his own just after learning PCR for two days. His ability to troubleshoot problems really impressed me. Let's dissect this problem a bit because I think it's a bit juicy. So. It's not true that I only read about PCR for two days. Maybe that's when he saw me, but I was reading about it before the internship and when I got the opportunity, probably like a month before. So I was reading a lot about what this lab does. I was reading through their research papers. I was reading about general techniques they use, etc. Because I was interested in biophysics when I was in high school. So I was really excited that I got this opportunity. So I think if you have an internship, especially at a young age, it's very important to brush up on the fundamentals because you may not have a lot of those. You can just ask the PI, the supervisor, that, hey, can you tell me things I should read on? And then you will be able to impress them more when you actually go there and you'll learn more. And I think it's going to be a more fun time because you won't be stuck. But yeah, it is true. I was asking a lot of questions and I made it clear at the start to tell the person that, hey, if I'm overbearing, just tell me. I'll ask you a lot of questions, just tell me when you need space and it worked out well, like he was very patient, so he was a wonderful person. Let's read more. His ability to troubleshoot problems really impressed me. He worked by my side till 10 p.m. on some days. And this is a testament to his commitment to science and ability to work hard, which is highly required in laboratories like ours. I think I really like this part as well because it is very specific. It shows a character sketch of what I'm like and what I'll be like at the university. Because it says I was working late till 10 p.m. at the lab. And you know, admissions officers look for things like this. They want specific day-to-day -day traits of tenacity and stamina. Um, they want people who can work long and who will have speed and hunger of knowledge. So if there is a way to paint these character traits in your recommendations or essays, try that. It's very important that whoever is reading it is able to visualize what you'll be like at that university or job when you go there. Let's read the third paragraph. Through Srijan is just finishing his school. He was very quick to pick up the theoretical basis and practical techniques of DNA, RNA extraction, PCR, gel electrophoresis, Sanger sequencing, and mammalian cell cultures. Now, I think he was being very generous here. Like, I read about all of these. I mostly read about, say, how you actually do these reactions with some equipment but i wouldn't say i was an expert in any of these uh, i did ask him a lot of questions but i think he was being generous here to be really honest he repeatedly mentioned his interest in biophysics and tried to identify his area of interest while working in the lab one thing about him that really impressed me is his curiosity to learn about any field we once went to have coffee in the big data institute in oxford really beautiful building you must go there if you're there and he ended up discussing the broad vision of biological research using mathematical models with core statisticians. I would say Srijan is not only a keen lab worker, but also a great conversationalist. His science is always rectified by his extremely logical thought process. This is good, right? Because I think he's basically painting a picture of what I'm like as a person. And the fact that I can hold conversations, I'm interested in things, or I think broadly about things is also very important. I think a lot of recommendations that I often read, uh, they zoom in too much. Uh, they're, all, they're all about, I do this, I do that. But it's not about, you know, your vision or can you think about ideas or philosophies or are you intellectual in general? And I think a lot of universities at an early age want to see evidence of those things. All right, now we move to the conclusion. When Srijan finished training with us, Dr. Isha showed interest to invite him to work with us in the future for a longer summer program. I was so excited when I got this. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't do this because I had to leave the UK. I think my student visa was expiring and I also had a Schengen visa and I did a 26 day Euro tour that was booked before I actually did this internship. But I was very excited when I had the opportunity and I regret not being able to do it. Then I went to university and I majored in computer science. I wasn't doing biophysics work anymore. But um, if I were, I think I would like to go back. The second point is it shows that I provided value within the internship. 
When anyone wants to give you a return offer where they invite you to do something again, that shows that they want you. That shows that you contributed in some positive way or they want to invest in you. And that's always positive. So in your recommendations, you can ask your uh, professor or teacher to include these as well. As his mentor, I'm satisfied with his performance. He's someone who does science out of true passion. Any university in this world should be delighted to have him in the class as he has the ability to positively influence his surroundings. For my direct experience of Sri John, I recommend him to your undergrad program without any reservation. All right. Yeah, and that's the conclusion. I think it's a nice conclusion because it sort of um, ends on a happy sort of note that he thinks I do science out of true passion. And I think this is somehow one of the most important lines in the recommendation. He kept mentioning that I do science because I want to. And I think that's really nice because trust is a big issue in admissions. People claim all sort of things. And if someone established that narrative that you have been doing things out of true passion, you're actually passionate about what you do, then that's always a plus point. Because if you're passionate, you're gonna work hard in the future. Um, but you can still change things. I switched from say physics and biology to computer science because I got more interested in it. But it's important to have some passion and then you can switch away or pivot from it. And with that, we have come to the end of this video. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I have an entire playlist up here about college applications. Just making this because I want to share my experience and that can help a lot of people. If you like content like this, I don't only make stuff on college applications, I make stuff on education, probably on my life in the Bay Area, then you should hit a subscribe button that should be somewhere on your screen and I'll see you next week.